and look very beetle juicy today. Our beetles juicy. So this project really gave me the runaround, but have no fear. Taurus Cusp of Aries is here. According to I dot the horoscope dot co, if not of interest and pleasure, but for stubbornness, they will see it through to the end, no matter what. That's me. That's me. I'm stubborn as hell. So I tried this project. Not once, not twice, not thrice, but four times until I got it right. That is a lot of resin, my dudes. Resin ain't cheap. For the sake of science and my own sanity, I really wanted to figure this one out for y'all and for me. And in the end, it really paid off and my inner horned animals could relax. The crown jewel of my existence, the passion flower. Really curious how these are gonna do. How cool are these? I am in love with these, obsessed. So I got this um, silica gel crystals from Amazon. I can link below to the product I'm using. It comes double bagged. I hope this is enough to cover all my flowers. Uh, it does come in a reusable bag, but I'm just going to use this airtight container. And it came with instructions, which I will look over now. All right, so basically, I did not know this, but you can use this in the microwave as well. It has instructions for that, and that only takes like three minutes max. Um, I'm going to try just drying it naturally and these orange crystals apparently turn dark green when they are full of moisture and not usable anymore and you can recharge them by putting it in the oven so this is completely reusable um this is so cool i'm really excited to try That's pretty cool. Uh, the tiny filaments have shrunk down to nothing, but still pretty cool looking. So I got all these molds from Let's Resin. Um, it was a really good deal. There's sturdy silicone walls. Um, got a bunch of squares and bars and rectangles and also a sphere, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I thought they would be deep enough for this guy, but it looks like the stamen is that what you call it? I'll have to look it up. Uh, is protruding a lot, so I might just like cut it down and glue it <laughs> and cheat a little bit. So I think I'm gonna do that. All right, I just did some flower surgery. Hopefully you won't notice that big old hot glue nub. Uh, I think this is the size I wanna use. Mm, maybe I'll go 
one bigger. Oof, yeah. It's gonna be a tight fit. Oh! I just broke off the little baby feeler things. For this project, we will pretend like they didn't even exist. Careful, because the pollen will still get on your mold. I'm gonna put him off to the side. Try and get that pollen out of there. It's no good. Or, you know, mix it in well enough so no one notices. <laughs> because I can't put the flame on the dried flower, I will try and get these bubbles out before I put the flower in. If that makes sense. So I'm using a torch here. Um, I wouldn't recommend this. The torch can actually fuse your resin to your mold. These guys are getting wild. Gonna go ahead and snip the stem off. Try and get him under. Try and get any bubbles come out. Now that everything is sub submerged or in resin, I'm gonna give it a quick torch. And again, don't do this because this is bad. Use a heat gun instead. So I think I can tell you guys that right now this is not going to work. Um, it's only been like an hour maybe and I don't think that this type of resin is meant for um, thick applications. And what happened is that it heated up so much, it got so hot that I couldn't touch it. And I think what that did is it fused the mold to the resin, unfortunately. So, um, and I think it actually burned the flower in here but we will try again with a different kind of resin. So luckily, um, some of it is coming off of the resin. I mean, overall, it stayed intact, but it did burn the flower. Um, I will try again. I have plenty of these growing in my garden. <laughs> so this attempt, I think I did end up using a different brand of resin, a slower curing resin, but again, um, using it in such a large quantity, it's still overheated and using the torch will only accelerate that heat reaction. And for my third trial, I actually used UV resin to kind of attach everything instead of hot glue. I found that it does uh, show less inside the regular resin and it blends in more. I built up my resin in layers to make sure that it didn't overload my little lamp here. My little lamp isn't strong enough to completely cure the resin, but I wanted it to have a really thick layer of resin, especially in the middle where I was getting a lot of large bubbles. So right here you can see uh, the product of this layering and pooling of resin and it made a, a nice base to put into my regular resin. I made sure to blast the underside with the UV light as well just to harden up any resin that had gotten underneath 
the actual flower. Um, so in this case, it still ended up um, overheating pretty badly. I think I did two layers and still the two layers was not sufficient enough to slow down the heating process to a normal rate. So at this point, I pretty much discovered that it was the type of resin that was creating my problem with the bubbles. Um, no matter how slowly it set, the bubbles were still an issue. So this is my second layer for this piece. And this is my fourth try. And I still have blooming passion flowers. So, I mean, that supply is unlimited. So that helps. Um, the longer casting epoxy is definitely the way to go for minimal bubbles. It's thinner and the viscosity is, it's low viscosity so all the bubbles kind of end up being degassed from the resin itself. And I kept wanting to do them in two tries, one try, whole batch of resin in there. You can't really do that with, with resin because the heat will just, they'll just be a, a heat reaction and burn your flower. Um, see here, I think these actually got burned and weird bubbles were popping up and these weird lines. You see that? Um, maybe of like the bubble itself traveling? I have no idea. It's very weird. Um, but you do want to avoid whoop, dropping your resin piece. Uh, so I'm about to do my third layer here, third and final, and then we'll get to demold. At this point, I was pouring resin very slowly. This is sped up a lot. I did not want to anger the bubble gods, trying to make sure that the resin got underneath all the petals, and voila. All right guys, moment of truth. This is by far the clearest, most bubble-free trial. And I'm excited to see it unmolded. Oh. My. God. It's. Perfect. There's like one tiny bubble right there. But you can't even really see it. And I don't know why, but there's like. See how some of these leaves are kind of see through? That might be from like oil on my hands, seeping into the petals. You can definitely kind of see the separation of layers, but you know, there's literally almost zero freaking bubbles. And you can't really tell where I use the UV resin to layer up for maybe like there and there a little bit but <laughs> this is just like so much better than this one you can see how it, the flower got burned and this one stayed cool and comfortable it will be interesting to see how long the color lasts in here so here we have a visual representation of my learning journey. <laughs> this one was one of my smaller flowers. They started getting bigger as the season went on. And as you can tell, the resin overheated completely, um, shrank up, kind of bunched up here as it solidified. 
lots of bubbles burn the flower lots of weird bubbles moving around leaving streaks got stuck to the mold like the worst all the worst things this is my second um thing uh, this is my second piece I obviously did not learn anything from the first piece because I just did the same dang thing I figured out it was a fluke it won't happen again I was wrong and this time giant bubble this weird snail trail which is probably just this bubble freaking moving around micro bubbles third time okay all right it's because I'm not I'm doing too too much resin at once fair enough um, I think with this version I did the UV resin which helps with the bubbles forming in there um, didn't overheat too much but did overheat a little you can see some of the pollen colored the resin in there you can see my silica gel turns dark green when it's when it's oversaturated with water and that's a bad thing for if you're drying flowers to put in resin so you got to be careful with that some silica gels do change color and they will dye your resin um, so two layers that did help but again look at the bubbles and then I thought okay this resin is just not working out it's a thicker resin um, so I tried my thinner resin and that was the way to go and this time I did three layers three separate layers and that really did did it it's perfect love it the only thing I would change was would be um, try and not get any concave surfaces where bubbles could get stuck like maybe I would fill that more up with the UV resin um, I would probably be careful and wear gloves when handling the flower because I think the oils maybe change these petals when you handle them I think maybe translucent they become translucent from the oils in your skin um, I did remove this back petal these are the petals that kind of open up initially on the flower um, I think that looks kind of cleaner on the back and yeah I mean I did alter the flower anatomy a little bit with these two but you got to do what you got to do don't come at me now I guess we'll go to some beautiful b-roll I hope you all learned a lot with me this project and that I Taurus Custoberries so you didn't have to please like subscribe and comment below which flower you would put in your resin and what your zodiac sign would do with this project. Ah, buh! Buh, buh! Buh!